Otra vez. ¡Viva la gorra blanca! It's a cultural, educational, political, historical. This is, this is like, a, like a novel you could write on the history of what you're going to see. Because it, in, it includes intrigue and suspense and mayhem and robbery and murder and politics. All that took place here in the period from around 1872 through up into the late 1890s. And uh, it's a story about the people of Las Vegas and their, and their resilience and uh, the people of the land grant movement in New Mexico. Because as we know, in the late 1870s, we had some characters that came in and their aim was to become land barons. Uh, you'll see as you go down the hallway, you'll see the governors of New Mexico during that period of time. Some were for it, some were against it. And you'll see the real big culprit is Thomas Catron. So his, his, he's pictured there. And Thomas Catron at one time, in 1886, I believe, was the largest landholder in the United States at that time. And they were all land grants that he had stolen. And through uh, various rings, the Murphy Dolan gang down south, where Billy the Kid was involved in, to the Santa Fe ring, to the, ch the stealing of the Chama land grant, and the stealing of the Las Vegas land grant, and incursions into other land grants. So this is a, his a historical an educational exhibit. So we placed this in an area, in a room that we knew was secure, had no windows, had no places to go in, and was, and was safe. We'll have, instead of a ribbon cutting, we thought it would be appropriate if we did a wire cutting. <laughs> it's an we'll important have, part of history, of, and it's our history here in, in New Mexico and in Southern Colorado. And uh, you know this, this history, um, goes back many, many years. It goes back to Mexico. It goes back to Spain. The penitentes still exist in many of these places, and they still exist here. And we're here to show you um, a beautiful, beautiful um, exhibit. And this I'm, is I'm tough because, happy. yeah, this is only supposed to be in the Morada, but I'll try. This is the, we have a Virgen. She's not here today because uh, uh, she'll be coming in June. She's from 1838. And we consider her the mother of the Gorra Blanca, so whoever wrote this uh, has been passed on. And uh, I don't have the shines that I'm, they're in there, but I'll go ahead and sing it. I'll go ahead and sing it all if I can, sure. if I can get through it. You know, it starts like this. Um, it's in Spanish, of course. Oh, divina madre mía, madre de mi corazón. Aquí estamos tus hijos, gorras blancas, madre de la soledad, que salites del congal. Anda, ven, anda, ven a tu altar. En los montes sangre Cristo tu presencia existirá. En las almas perpetual, gorra blanca, madre de la soledad, madre de gorra blanca. Anda, ven, anda, ven a tu altar. Los poderes del infierno no son nada para ti. Agua bendita beberemos para sobrevivir. Madre de la soledad, madre de gorra blancas. Aquí estamos, aquí estamos en tu altar. I'm from Pecos, just over the mountain, and I did grow up with the family with Morada traditions, but um, didn't know about the Goras Blancas, and I'm really glad to learn and to continue to learn our history because it is so rich and powerful. 
And it's, this is amazing today. This is humbling to see so many people here and the work of all of the, everyone who's been mentioned, Lorenzo, the committee. Thank you all, my fellow commissioners. This is wonderful to be part of this. And uh, thank you. I'm really honored and I'm excited to see the exhibit. Brought it forward. And I think that's the message of the Gora Blanca as well as the Hermanos Penitentes, that there's a persistence, there's a strength of culture, there's a strength of identity a strength of intentionality that, that makes things happen even in the worst and the most adversarial of conditions. So that, that's the message and, and Vice President mentioned, you know, the idea of understanding this as an education event, but consider not only as educational but as a challenge event that we carry forward, you know, what were the voices of the past and the stories of the past that find themselves embellished and reincarnated in, 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 in our champions that are within our community these days that we reiterate you know, what is their message and that we understand deeply that commitment to culture and tradition and family and community. And those are the foundational elements of what the original Goras Blancas are at. And the Goras Blancas, vive, they're still around in, in spirit and in heart and it's in all of us. So uh, we, I, I frame it again as the idea that this is a challenge for us at all, not only to embrace what was, what was done historically, but consider ourselves as emblemic of that, that we continue that because there's a lot of there's a lot of politica and there's a lot of colonization that's still in place. There's a, there's land theft and it's taking different kind of venues and different kind of faces. But we're still losing land and culture and tradition and language, and so we have to take that on and become champions of ourselves. And again, thank you to the champions here that brought it together, and champions in the Gora Blanca and the Hermanos Penitentes. Que viva la Gora Blanca! Que viva! But what's not in, the, in many of the history books, um, you know, you got Pablo, Nicanor, and Juan Jose. But what's missing from a lot of these history books is there was a fourth one, and they had a sister. Her name was Maria. Maria is my father's grandmother. Maria, my, my father's mother, took care of Nicanor till the day he died. My father was five years old when Nicanor died in El Porvenir. So my father, sitting in this room, knew Nicanor Herrera and all the oral history that Nicanor passed down through my grandmother and through my father. That's the kind of stuff that you don't find in history books. Um, and there's some pretty wild stories about what they've done and, and who did it and who never got caught doing it. Uh, so, so maybe someday we'll share all these stories. Um, but my father, Eli Ulibarri, El Sobrino de la Gora Blanca. Viva Gorro Blanca! So who are these people to you? My great uncles. How? Their brother to my grandma, my, my, my paternal grandma. Maria. Maria Herrera. Maria Herrera Ulibarri. Yes. And her husband was Jose Ulibarri. Yes. Was. Was. Yeah. What was so important about what they did? They kicked the Texans out of New Mexico. Out of northern New Mexico, at least. Northern, yes. <laughs> Esperando en 
Y tomar 